Welcome to, uh, to everybody to this, our sixth uh, UKSN webinar. Uh, this afternoon, uh, we have uh, Jenny Tillotson talking to us. Uh, the, um, for those of you who've been to our physical meetings, uh, you'll all know Jenny because she's attended many of the meetings and over the years, uh, she's spoken on uh, incorporating fragrance into uh, fashion designs and also into uh, jewellery designs. And now with COVID coming along, uh, she's um, uh, moved over to, uh, to Mass. Uh, she started working, um, uh, doing a PhD in uh, textiles at uh, the Royal College of Arts. Uh, and uh, over the years has uh, worked with a number of different organizations, uh, including uh, the uh, Chemical Engineering and Biotechnology Department at um, Cambridge. And uh, uh, I think that facilitated her, her um, uh, coming along to our meetings, uh, being based in Cambridge, uh, where we've ha held uh, the last uh, few meetings. So um, today, uh, her talk is titled Reducing Viral Transmission by Adapting Mass. And so now I'll hand over to you, Jenny. Thank you. Thank you, Simon. Absolute pleasure. So let me just share my screen. Great. Can you see that? Yes. Yeah. Fantastic. So, yes, yeah, Simon, thank you very much um, for inviting me and, and Krishna and certainly for Glenis as well. Um, so I'm going to talk to you today about ESCENT, reducing viral transmission. Oh, is that a full screen? Beg your pardon. Hello. Oh, no. it, it is full screen. Beg your pardon. So, yeah, <laughs> yes. So I'm going to speak to you about the um, ESCENT reducing viral uh, transmission by adaptive masks, which is a project funded by Innovate UK. Um, Innovate UK. So you already touched on my background. Obviously, I come from um, the design industry, and this is very much a design-led presentation. Um, I call, I'm, I'm a an inventor. I've actually just just in the last week, I've been made a visiting researcher at the Department of Psychiatry. So I've moved from biotech, where I, I was for a number of years. Um, up until about 2017 and um, I'm now working in psychiatry which is um, uh, working on new projects at the moment so yeah I'm, I'm a former academic from Central St Martins and have won various projects and um, and as yeah presented to you uh, yeah 11 years ago so that was just update that so if we go back to my education I mean I got into all this very much through George Dodd and, and doing my first degree at Central St Martins in smell communication um, and a PhD in printed textiles, by um, uh, which was part funded by IFF. I have no science qualifications, so uh, but you know this is a design-led presentation, and my passion very much led by my passion for fragrances um, and looking at new ways of of using smell creatively in the fashion industry. So that's kind of where it came from. So these are, I'm, I was gonna start the presentation by showing you some of my earlier projects, which I would have presented to you before, but it's important to see where this came from. And these, this is my smart second skin dress. Um, and this was presented at the v &A and at various exhibitions um, across, uh, across Europe, really. Um, and this is the idea of sort of uh, the skin, a dress that's imitating skin. And so then other projects include uh, a scent dispenser, uh, my, my project, The Beetle, um, which you might, I think I probably presented before, but this is, this is a, a scent dispenser that uses a pico liter scent dispenser um, and re releases scent in response to various sort of stimuluses. And this was very much inspired by the Bombardier Beetle. Um, and this was funded by Arts and Humanities Research Council. Um, and a lot of my work is nature inspired, this one, also with with um, moths and perfume, uh, moths and pheromones and, and smell communication. So this was a, a project yeah, called Scent, Scent Whisper, but this is actually where the whole story started um, and led to various patents. And I'll talk about that as I go along. Um, yeah, so then I, I was at, at Central St. Martins for about 15 years working on various creative projects. Um, and then at the same time, also a visiting scholar in the biotech lab working under Chris Lowe, who I'd met when I was doing my PhD at the Royal College of Art um, with George Dodd, who was my supervisor. And this is just one of one of one of the, one of the well, the main project actually I worked on at Cambridge, which was developing a um, 
uh, a running bag for the North Face, uh, which was releasing various different scents, uh, mainly to reduce st stress and to help enhance the you know, running performance. Um, and this was, yeah, a project with the North Face, um, various issues with the technology, but it gives you an idea of, of some of my earlier projects. Now, this was funded by VF. Um, so this, this is my first patent, which is quite, quite it's the core patent, actually, wearable scent technology in smart textiles. Um, and this is the idea of, of embedding nozzles and various delivery systems in, in wearable devices and textiles uh, in response and you know, releasing scent and other liquids in response to some kind of trigger. So whether that could be sound or biometric sensors or or, or, or actually body odor. I mean, that's actually in the patent um, uh, as, you know, but this is a core patent of the idea of, of a delivery system, a wearable, wearable wireless delivery system that releases liquids in response to some kind of stimulus. Um, so this, this patent's been awarded in China, UK, Japan, uh, sorry, China, uh, two in the US and uh, yeah. So one, one of them recently was awarded to do with sound. So this is the concept of eScent, and it's this idea of um, eScent that uses AI and bio, bio, biometric algorithms to create this sort of personalized scent bubble um, in response to sort of various in response to sort of emotional and sensory cues. And it, the idea being that it's enhancing mood and, and sustaining wellness. So that, that's kind of the core of where this idea came from. And I like to call it kind of well, closing the loop. I mean, it's it's really bringing these areas together where you have a scent delivery system, whether that's worn near the nose, um, and then it's interfacing with various different biometric sensors worn on the, the wrist or, or, or smartphone or whatever. Um, and then my most recent patent, one, well, one of the, this was filed a couple of years ago, is the scent bubble, the idea of, of creating a diffused scent bubble um, and um, uh, no novel dispersal techniques and methods to establish and maintain a localized sphere of scent. So um, the idea being that this is a, a liquid delivery system and you can work out how much scent is released from these wearable devices, whether it's, for example, it could be earrings that's um, releasing a very localized scent bubble, or it could be a much larger one that's worn perhaps on a necklace down, down on your chest, or it could be on, for example, on your smartwatch, which would be a really large bubble, or it could be on your socks even if it was inset repellent, for example. Um, but this is a pending patent to do with the physics behind the scent bubble. Um, and I worked on this with the fragrance industry, various, various advisors, but also inkjet people as well. So um, this, this is, um, yeah, so this is ca calculating how much scent uh, could go into the cartridge. So, I mean, it's, it's technical, but it's this idea of, of creating this personalized scent bubble. So where I am now, um, as I mentioned, I've joined Cambridge recently as, as a visiting researcher. Um, and what I'm looking at is what I call a closed loop scent intervention. So it's kind of bringing these areas together and how it can help with mental health, um, enabling the sort of personalized delivery of low ethanol scent um, uh, as a sensory control segment for multiple industries. And this is very much led by my, my passion for fragrances and particularly finding fragrances that don't give me a rash or you know, um, can enhance my mood and are biosynchronized to how I'm feeling, for example, um, as I said, in, and interfacing with your companion devices and, and smartwatches and this, that and the other. Um, but the, the key thing is that it's detecting early stages in, in stress and other biometric parameters. And the reason I, I've, if you like, invented this is because I suffer from anxiety myself. I, just even presenting, I get you know, very stressed. So I, I kind of wanted a new way of, of using and experiencing and applying fragrances that can, can really help me throughout the day. So if you like, like a bit like a kind of Glade or a, or a air diffuser, but that you carry round with you at all times, that's mobile and wearable um, and can create this kind of personalized scent bubble on the go. Um, and also is kinder to skin. Um, yeah, things like that. So, so anyway, so that's, that's a kind of quick uh, overview, a rather muffled overview of my background and, and what, where I've come from and where I'm going. I mean, I, as I said, I have a, a company called eScent, which is a platform-based deep, well, exploring this idea of a platform-based deep tech SME in the wellbeing sector. Um, and then COVID hit. So it was like, well, I could potentially adapt this technology and this concept into a mask with two functions. So of course, there's the, the uh, release of stress in real time, using aromas to release stress, 
but also the reduction of viral transmission. And that, that's really what this presentation is about. So I don't need to go into sort of the main, well, but the main COVID, the three issues are is airborne spread despite systematic vaccination and lack of local nasal immune. You know, we know that COVID is in the nose. Masks is a real failure to fully protect healthcare workers. And there's also this waste element. Um, and we know that, that, you know, up to five, over five million people have died and, and um, over 200, 250 million people have recorded cases. So that's, that's the kind of where we are today. So this is, yeah, I mean, um, so, so why, what, what is the problem with, with PPE? Well, there are various different masks. We know that surgical masks are, you know, are not fully protective. You have the FFP3 masks and Adderbrooks, some research from Adderbrooks has shown that FFP3 masks are, are, are more, 100% actually that were protective in, in the COVID wards compared to previously when we were using sort of surgical masks. So there is, there is a real issue with, what well, has been the real issue with these masks and current options fail to completely protect, um, you know, at best FFP3 is 98% effective. So there is a real issue with masks and, and that's kind of where, 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 what I'm leading up to with my presentation. There's also the waste element. Current options fail to protect completely and add massively to global planetary waste. Um, plastic accounts for 85% of total marine waste. So that, you know, there's a real need for of having a reusable mask uh, without having to throw all this plastic away. So 129 billion plastic fiber masks, these, ty these types of masks are used globally every month. Um, so this, this is another major factor of, 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 of this project, which is, is about creating this, this new mask. And then there's also um, care, hub, care workers. We know that 100, according to Matt, Matt Hancock in July, he claimed that 1,500 people from health and social care lost their lives, not necessarily due to the lack of PPE, but just the wrong fitting PPE. Um, and up to 115,000 health care workers have died. So, the, you know, there's a real problem um, and UCLH have had, have had an outbreak of, of, of you know, people that have been dying basically because, you know, you're using these masks, you take them off at lunch and breaks and then you catch COVID. So, um, yeah, that, that's um, a, a, you know, a major, major issue. Um, so Omic Om Omicron, is that how you pronounce it? Omicron, uh, the, the COVID viral pandemic continues, as we know. Um, this new variant has only been around since what? couple of weeks I think it is you know since, certainly since November first identified in South Africa despite 85 percent immunity it's growing much faster than Delta more transmissible vaccination less effective but actually it's more it's milder um, but Covid is not going away anytime soon and that's that's the key thing here is is I wanted to design find a way of taking my tech and designing a new mask um, however much viruses are susceptible to many substances outside the host so um, yeah I mean that's that's the Om Omicron so where do we where does this all go? This is all background info. So I, I was talking to Glennis, and she's been a fantastic supporter and, uh, you know, uh, about my technology. And she, she suggested, well, you could potentially put your mask, your idea into a mask based on the very much based on the modern version of a medieval medieval plague mask, but without the beak. <laughs> um, yeah. So we have some pictures here of, of the beak from sort of the 17th century from in Europe. Um, and in med medieval times, plague masks were used to filter out the bad air with dried flowers, herbs, you know, thieves oil, in fact, thieves oils, which is sort of um, lemon, cinnamon, clove, eucalyptus, rosemary. And, and the beak was designed to resist infection. Um, and so this is very much, you know, it was like, wow, you know, I could, I could. So long story, kind of long story short, I, I won an Innovate UK innovation grant. Um, and managed to pull together a fantastic team, including the Imagination Factory anchored in, um, and, and got a great advi advisory board, uh, including Glennis, obviously has helped, but others from complementary health and wellbeing, and including psychiatry and medtech. So that's kind of the vision, if you like. Um, and then it was really bringing all of that together with, with the biometric and, and the liquid and the, the sensors and being able to bring in the antiviral element to the stress reduction. So we have the same, the, the diagram I showed earlier, it's the same kind of thing. So, but, but bringing in a kind of antiviral. So rather than relying on repeated vaccination, for, for example, as, as we are, there's a future option to, might be a combination approach. So for example, a reusable FFP3 mask plus automated intermittent use via the e-scent dispenser in this case, which is, originally from my beetle jewellery. Um, 
And that would be a nasal antiviral, for example, a natural antiviral spray that also provides aroma stress relief by a feedback loop. So it's it's so it's if you like, it's a two way mask system. And then that's um, that's what that diagram is, is trying to explain. Um, so, yeah, so I, I 2000, yeah, last year, I managed to get some support. This is before the Innovate UK grant, uh, including University of Cambridge Institute of Sustainable Leadership. I got a scholarship from the Henry Roy Royce Institute and I won a place on the Impulse Maxwell Centre. So this, this little animation here is just going to show you actually it's um, it, 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 it just it, it shows how the mask would work worn by a nurse in, in, a, in a situation with a biometric sensor. But actually, before I show you that, it's only 20 seconds long, before I show you that, in April 2020, when I was first exploring this, somebody from the cabinet rung me up um, because I reached out and said, look, I've got this great idea. And they called me back. Um, and, they, and the feedback was from the Crown Commercial Service was, wow, this is a game changing future PPE solution. So I don't think it's such a crazy idea. This, um, so it's just to show that there, there was potential interest. But if I just quickly show you this. Um, this, this is basically, it's showing a nurse, stressed out nurse in a mask. So, so that's the idea, the idea there of, 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 of having a kind of something to, to release you in, 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 in real time. So, um, so therefore, I, I won an Innovate UK Sustainable Innovation Grant, um, which was a green innovation grant, and this introduced transformative technologies that could potentially change the face of high protection via a reusable FFP3 mask. And I can show it to you briefly. I mean, there's, um, I've got a whole range of them, but um, and the and it's the idea of using scent and antiviral properties in real life scenarios, and it's a reusable and comfortable protector which which with the potential to utilize the nose as a route for therapy, um, which is needed. So that's, um, th those words are from Glenys. So I have to give her credit for that. Um, and the mask was designed by the Imagination Factories who are actually ex, uh, the, the part of the team members were ex Dyson mask engineers. So it was actually built with mask and mask, military mask people helping me. Um, and it was, as I said, it was a green innovation and a human centered localized approach, creating this sort of support bubble inside a mask with the idea being that it increases efficacy, tolerability uh, with the use of smart aerosolized compounds, whatever they might be. I mean, I've talked about stress release, it could be natural antivirals, and it's providing timely psychological reassurance with evidence based stress reducing aromas. And designed it very much with reuse in the circular economy as opposed to throwing these plastic ma masks away every day or um, you know it was really having a, a reusable mask and I also really was very keen to look at the whole biosolvents um, and replacing the you know replacing ethanol based fragrance formulation so that's that's that that came into some of the research we did last year and that's where I'm, I'm moving forward with that with that side but it was yeah so that gives you an idea of, of what it looked like to start with um, and I work with um, a green chemistry, green rose chemistry. So I actually had some support from looking at green chemistry, which is a completely new area to me. So that was that was um, very interesting. So this is the inside of the mask. It's a personal protective assurance, a wearable nebulizer um, that, offer, that offers, you know, um, applicator component embedded in an FFP3 valved mask. Um, uh, designed to protect the nose and lungs against viruses, um, using an antiviral that goes up the nose to prevent viral attachment. Um, and, and it's this idea of having this personalized mask that releases pulses of liquid, depending on context. I mean, it could be, you know, stress reduction, it could be antiviral, it could be for other applications, possibly, you know, psychedelic medicine or CBD or, or all sorts of other things. But I'm very much focusing on, on, uh, focusing on, on the antiviral and the, and the stress reduction. Um, this is a little animation I really wanted to show you of the first stage prototype and, and how and, uh, you know, the idea of combining filtration of air from a hostile environment and nebulized medication um, designed to inhibit viral attachment and evidence based essential oils. So if I just quickly show you this, it's, it just gives you an idea of, of the, the diff diffuser, because that's what it is at this stage and delivering you know, ar aromatics. So it's just quite short. Yeah, so here in this case, you'd have the diffuser that's, that's releasing 
an antiviral, for example, and it's uh, or a stress reducing odor that's going to the amygdala and re helping reduce stress, but also going down to the lungs um, as a new and effective way to reduce viral spread, a potential method for lining the upper respiratory tract with whatever protection substance is needed. So, so that, that's the, the side view. And, and the, 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 I had some support from Gentex who helped um, with the, with the Gentex are military mask. They helped me with the, um, the strap. Um, so yeah, it was a quick cross section of the mask. It, what's really key is that, you know, you can personalize it with your own colors and the fabric side on the, on the outside could be personalized for your own choice. So this was worn by a nurse. Um, uh, and yeah, so the mask had quite a bit of a uh, little bit of press here in Cambridge, where I'm based, uh, mainly for I met the MP. Um, it was on the front pages of the Business Weekly, mainly, mainly interested in this. This is an, as a way to help with frontline workers and reduce stress. Um, and it was picked up by the MedTech. So that, that, that gives you an idea of, of yeah, some of the interest that I've had so far. So, yeah, if we look at some of the um, evidence and off the shelf products. VIX is um, VIX First Defense, which is a medical device and uses menthol and camphor and zinc. And that offers antiviral effectiveness, was shown to reduce the development of a viral cold in, in, in various studies. I mean, yeah, so there's, there's, there's some evidence to show um, it neutralizes the virus. Certainly I use it and Adam Brooks Hospital nurses use it and various people use it as a, as a way to warn off a cold. And then Boots Viral Defense is used Karagigan, Ginans, I hope I pronounced that properly. Uh, but the problem with nasal sprays, and I've got one here, I mean, I, as I use the VIX one, um, they rely on being used. And, and however, adherence is poor, people forget to use them or they don't use them all the time. So this is what, one of the issues that you know, I'm, I'm looking at, certainly. Um, right, so the evidence also for natural anti, antivirals the, is fucoidin, um, the mar marine acid polysaccharide fucoidin has attracted attention from both the food and the pharmaceutical industries due to its promising therapeutic effects. I mean, fucoidin is found in, in miso soup and, um, uh, and various sort of nasal sprays. I've got another one, actually another fucoidin nasal spray. Um, and it is a polysaccharide that mainly consists of l fucose and sulfate groups. I mean, you know, this, it's really just, a, you know, there is evidence it, that, that, that fucoidin is a classical anti activities include antiviral, anti-tumor, anti-antioxidant, anti, um, um, you know, and anti-inflammatory effects. So, um, yeah, there's various other evidence here. I mean, this is not my area, so you'll have to bear with me. But just to show that, you know, fucoidin inhibits HIV, herpes, cold sores, um, and so yeah. So those are some of the uh, some of the evidence behind it. But in summary, fucoidin has broad medicinal prospects as an effective low toxic antiviral compound. Um, so this is a growing area. I mean, there's a lot a lot of research going, and I, I've I've had some support from one of the suppliers in fucoidin, and it works in the prototype. Should I say? Yeah, um, it, we, we can certainly dispense it inside a mask. Um, uh, so that's that's one one of the. I mean, I can't obviously demonstrate it here now, but happy to to show you in, in person another time. You can see how how fucoidin would work in the mask. Um, and then there's carrageenan's, the red seaweed, and that belongs to a family of um, sulfated polysaccharides. You know, found in red sea, red seaweed, and then that's in food, cosmetics, and ice cream, toothpaste spermicides um, and there are studies to show that that, um, that it's a potent and potent inhibitors of, of um, various other you know the common cold influenza so there, there is evidence to show that that these can certainly well, this one can can um, ward off a, a cold and it's used in the boot I think I mentioned earlier it's moved, moved, used in the boots um, spray um, so yeah, there's the mental health burden. I mean, you know, masks are uncomfortable to wear, which is why I kind of jumped on this because I, I wear a mask and it gives me panic attacks and, and they're uncomfortable to wear. They're hot, the breathing panic issues, tiring, stressful. Um, and we know that during the pandemic, you know, 44% of doctors were experiencing depression, anxiety and burnout, um, and according to a BMA study. Um, PTSD rates particularly are, are, have been up 49% in, in, uh, in, in America. Um, rates of suicidal thoughts amongst frontline workers, mainly many front workers are, are you know, leaving the pr profession. Um, so this just gives an over, I mean, we don't need to, you know, this is the news all the time. 
Um, so yeah, that just, that's, we don't need to go too much into that. So if we go more into what is available as far as fragrance delivery and, and scent uh, for, for, for well-being. So what, what is unique about my technology is it's, it's offering adaptive scent versus passive aroma sticks that are used in the NHS. So one of my advisors is from the Christie Hospital. Um, and this photo is actually from her, from she uses these um, aroma sticks. Um, and what I'm doing, you know, with these little, with the capsules that go in my mask is blending aromas and other liquids as a potential pandemic prevention measure in a mask in this case. Um, and it's offering sort of liquid reservoirs for scent and antivirals as a replaceable and refillable system, if you like. Um, and it's customized for personal pre preference. Um, so you can see the size of these little capsules, but these go inside and you can, the, the, the mask actually has two diffusers, so you could, you could potentially blend and, and mix them together or just have one or the other. So that's, um, so yeah, um, I, I, my favorite one is the orange mask. I use that because <laughs> um, I'm a huge fan of Neroli. Uh, this is for anxiety. There is evidence, mainly there's, you know, there's limited evidence um, on essential oils, as I'm sure you know, but there's, there's two. Uh, lavender and neroli are, are my favorites and there's a double blinded placebo controlled trial that's shown neroli as a safe and efficient intervention to relieve anxiety um, so I <laughs> I, des I designed this orange mask particularly for, for myself but um, um, to, to reduce fight or flight but yeah I, I use neroli for an, in daily all the time in, in room diffusers but th there is evidence so that that's particularly one of them and there's dental studies and certainly other and then if we go back to, to lavender, stress reducing mask for, for lavender, there's more, I believe there's more studies for lavender, but um, RCT scientific studies suggest that inhaled lavender can reduce stress. Um, we know that people take lavender oral capsules in the, in the form of these calms, um, and they've been shown uh, well, to with benzodiazepine antidepressants. And then there's lavender in the treatment of, of, of herpes as well. Um, but I'm sort of mainly focusing on on the stress reduction side of it. So um, so yeah, I, I, my in in my mask I have a palette of of capsules if you like, uh, and uh, la there's a neroli, lavender, bergamot, um, all sorts of them, uh, frankincense, and then and then you've got the antivirals, which is the bucoid, and 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 um, I'm going to go on to some others as well. And in, in yeah, licorice and menthol. So this is this is part of my actually I should show you now. This is this is the scent palette. Um, and here you have these little capsules and the different colors lift colored color coded to go with the different um, with the different substances really so the, there's some evidence to show that licorice is shown to be active against SARS and I think that was in 2003 a study in nature um, and also with menthol, menthol uh, high performer it's a high menthol fragrant peppermint uh, it, it's, it's cooling I mean that's used in the VIX but the, that, that has some antiviral properties. Um, so yeah, so I've, I've put those under my antiviral evidence. Um, and also, I mean, I particularly chose those because I wanted to find a blend that would smell nice. Uh, the idea of having fucoidin, which is salty, licorice, which is sweet, sweetish, and then menthol, which is cooling. So bringing those together as a, as a, as a, as a nice smelling blend inside the mask. So the next steps, so further work, I mean, this is, you know, the further work is needed uh, to assess the effectiveness or otherwise of viral attachment inhibitors in, in vitro, then in vivo, and to quantify stress reduction by olfactory cues. And also very much looking at the green materials to minimize damage caused by one-time use masks. That's a major part of this research. Um, and I have partners lined up for productization and, and taking it forward. But um, so, you know, there are various, size of the research, looking at the dose delivery for the substances, whatever they might be, whether it's anti, yeah, well, the stress reduction and then, uh, essential oils um, and the natural antivirals, the nozzle development, the capsule system, um, and then looking at added communication, speech, transparent panels. Um, these are all areas that I'm looking for the next stage of the development of the mask, because um, this is, just to recap, this is a first stage prototype, being able to, you know, yeah. Um, which needs testing it needs it needs further development work um so yeah i mean well today we, we know that masks are, are, are you know people have got to work from home but i mean there was covid has exposed that there's deep economic insecurities one in four this was one in four 20 percent of british workers 
would turn, this is before actually, I mean, this, this slide is a bit out of date, but you know, in a nutshell, what I'm trying to say is there is a need for a wearable, personal, protective, preventative nebulizer ma mask, but it requires further funding and testing and, and looking, at, looking at this blended, um, yeah, concoction that I've put together with the Fucoid and licorice and menthol. Um, so, yeah, so that that's that's really my talk. But I wanted to summarize with with a film. If I'd like to first of all, I really, I mean, yeah, I'd like to very much thank the uh, Glennis most of all. Glennis has been absolutely fantastic, a real pleasure to work with, um, has, has helped enormously, and the funders Innovate UK. It was a Sustainable Innovation Fund Award. Then my company, Sensory Design and Technology, and the partners, Imagination Factory, Ankerdin. They um, who were collaborators on the award. And then my very impressive advisory board right the way through from the Christie Foundation. Um, I had some support from Pam Dalton, um, psychiatrists and, and the mask community as well, um, right the way through to um, some suppliers of some of these substances that I've been using. So, yeah, so that's the end of that. But I, that's that uh, summarizes the, the talk. But if I if I can show you my film, that would be really good. Is that OK to summarize with? It's a six minute film um, that that uh, describes the technology uh, and, and and the vision and, and might be very helpful. That's fine. Go ahead. Yeah, if you just bear with me. I've just got to work out how to do it. Hello, I'm Jenny Tillotson, the founder of eScent, a transformative technology that will harness the most primitive of our senses, the sense of smell. With around 500 million people globally suffering with anxiety, the world is facing an acute mental health crisis. Rates of addiction and suicide are at an all-time high and loneliness has reached epidemic proportions. The nose, overlooked for so long, is finally becoming more prominent in the wake of COVID-19. Up to half of infected people with coronavirus temporarily reported losing their ability to perceive smells. The unpredictability of the pandemic and the loneliness of lockdowns saw a 30% spike in mental health issues, and many people turned to scent to improve their mood. During the pandemic, face masks became a necessity for entire populations across the globe. But they can be uncomfortable to wear, they retain moisture, they irritate the skin, create psychological barriers, devastate ecosystems and pollute the oceans. For many people, mask wearing also causes anxiety, which can trigger panic and breathing problems. Throughout the pandemic, this has had a negative psychological impact on frontline workers, with many experiencing PTSD, depression and burnout. So, I invented eScent, an intelligent way of dispensing fragrances and other liquids that offers more personal protective assurance and is biosynchronized to the physical and emotional state of the wearer. This technology is based on my own personal experience of anxiety. I needed something that would give me my moment of calm when my emotions become overwhelming. Something that would react to my emotional state without any conscious intervention. Something that would have an instant impact on my state of mind by using scent to ground me and to anchor my feelings into a much safer space. Here's how our technology works. eScent features smart sensors embedded with AI and voice analytics, which are able to detect early increases in stress and other biometric parameters. These sensors then trigger the release of a localized cloud of scent, a scent bubble that changes moment by moment, reacting to and anticipating the wearer's mood at exactly the right time. In this way, eScent connects people to nature by engineering sensory experiences through context. By combining the ancient art of perfumery with emerging technologies and green chemistry expertise, we can revolutionize how we can leverage our sense of smell the one sense we cannot switch off. 
Interfacing with companion devices, eScent can also deliver blended aromas as a preventative psychological safety net, tailored specifically to user needs, or as an intranasal delivery system to protect against future viruses. For our first companion device, we have partnered with the Imagination Factory and Anchored In to develop a reusable, enhanced FFP3 face mask, one that offers personalised and renewable scent as a self-delivered biofeedback intervention for mental distress. Using scent as a closed-loop, adaptive, predictive and preventive system is an untouched territory ripe for commercialisation. Protected by a number of awarded patents, eScent is a product concept that integrates hardware, software and a subscription-based fragrance service as a catalyst to improve health, emotional well-being and performance. Although eScent will initially be embedded in our face mask, it can be integrated into multiple different form factors, leading to several categories, including well-being, such as triggering positive autobiological olfactory memories, improving mood or supporting engagement with cognitive behavioural therapy, or as a mindfulness meditation tool to create a deeper, richer experience. In entertainment, to enhance consumer experiences in fashion tech, augmented beauty, learning and gaming. In therapy, such as in dementia care and psychedelic medicine. And in protection, for example, as an AR alert system in emergency services, or a pilot hypoxia alarm scent system. It can even be used as a home scent for astronauts to support their long voyage. With sustainability and the circular economy at our core, we have ambitious goals for the use of safe green materials, ones which reduce the negative impact that masks are having on the environment. eScent helps to redefine the future of health and emotional wellness, creating a whole new category in the immersive multi-sensory domain and leveraging our patented wearable platform scent technology. Personal protective assurance means to me that I can go out happily knowing that I'm going to come back and not get sick. And for me, the eScent mask would be that personal protective assurance. Jenny's technology is going to be able to help not only my patients, it's going to be able to help patients throughout the NHS. I support, care for a small number um, of patients that have cancer and, and a, a number of those are, are challenged by the situation they're in. This is a way that could potentially help them to not get to that situation where they are completely overwhelmed. If you would like to know more about how we can help you and your organisation, please contact us at hello at eSent.ai. So yeah, so that that's a film that summarizes the presentation, and and obviously the the, the last lady that was the, the Jackie uh, is my one of my advisors from the um, NHS Christie Hospital that uses those aroma sticks that um, you might be familiar with, and then of course Glenis who has been a huge supporter and was uh, and helped me a lot with with this project in general, and I'm very grateful. So thank you. Thank you, Jenny. Uh, that was a really interesting talk. Uh, the uh, are you happy to um, take questions? Yeah, yeah, I'll try best I can. You know, a lot of those words I can't pronounce properly, but um, uh, but I I've got Glennis here that she can answer any, and hopefully, <laughs> uh, uh, yeah. I mean, yeah, I'll, I'll do the best I can. Absolutely. <laughs> okay, uh, I just thought I'd mention uh, that. Um, have you ever met uh, Sashiko Koyama? I haven't, but she reached out to me um, as soon as, because uh, I was on your last presentation, she reached out to me and sent me her paper. So um, I, sh I should should catch up with her. I know she was very interested, but I haven't. Uh, I've read yeah, her paper. Uh, yeah. She, she, she was recommending her. flavonoids in green tea and black tea as, oh. uh, uh, as an antiviral. Um, okay. And uh, she said uh, they say it's been put in some mass in Japan now already. Um, Okay. No, well, definitely. You know, I mean, it's uh, working on the, the delivery system, and then all of that will need to be tested. And uh, yeah, I'm very, very open to conversation on that. Thank you. I, I wondered about uh, the um, uh, the use of these antivirals. So uh, whether they would have any effect on the um, the microflora that's on uh, 
uh, th uh, the surface of the upper respiratory tract uh, because that's very important for uh, defending against um, uh, fungal infections yeah. uh, like uh, candida or this uh, uh, this black mold uh, that's uh, uh, been uh, found in India uh, uh, when uh, they've uh, used various materials uh, to uh, try and uh, pr uh, prevent the uh, uh, the COVID infections, uh, it causes uh, black mould. Um. Yeah, I mean, all of these are, uh, you know, this needs to be tested. So, so certainly this is something I'd certainly need to look into. I don't know if Glenys has any other further comments on that particularly, but. Um, but yeah. My um, comment about the mould is that places like India are much more likely to have moulds where they're really hot and humid you know, hot and wet. I think it is unlikely to be a big problem in Northern Europe, but it's something that we'll need looking into. Uh, I've not known anyone who's been using the boot spray or the Vicks First Defence with their nose. I've uh, come across people um, using uh, throat lozenge lozenges uh, that have had uh, infections of candida after uh, they've taken these uh, throat lo lozenges. Um. Uh -huh. They're full of sugar, aren't they? That, that may be part of the reason um, that they would, they would predispose to Canada. I don't know whether um, they, they also contain local anaesthetic, but I don't know whether they would also reduce clearance and allow Canada to... Um, to settle more easily as well. Okay. Yeah. Do we have any more questions? Yes, I have one. Um, how would you keep the inside of the mask um, free of bacteria? Like, are you able to clean the inside of the mask? Yeah, I mean, we need to look into all of that at the next stage. At this, this stage, it's just a first. Um, that that's will come into the next stage development because that's a major part of it absolutely yeah. i mean there is a filter system in there but yeah we need to find a way of cleaning it yeah um, you can't have any prolonged use of a mask without being able to to clean it clean it mm. yes and I'm, I'm sure you could probably do alcohol wipes or something fairly simple like that in it Carl, I think you had a question, didn't you? Yeah, I was just first to say thanks, Jenny, for a fantastic talk. And um, I was interested in seeing your first slides there. My, my daughter's just uh, applying for fashion at Central St. Martin. And oh, sort of, right. Uh, so I sent her a screenshot saying, look, you can end up in Dad's field if you carry on down this track. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, oh, good for her. Well, good. Best oh, of luck. fantastic. <laughs> yeah. yes. um, anyway, but I was just going to ask, um, I mean, what do you think the greatest challenge is in terms of progressing this so project forward, as you said, at this stage. <laughs> Sorry, I, I didn't, didn't catch that. Just, what, what do you think is the greatest challenge in progressing your project to, to the next stage? Well, I'd say the nozzle development is, is one, one part. I mean, I have a delivery system. It's two diffusers. We need to miniaturise that. I mean, I've, I've worked on earlier, earlier nozzles from, and jewellery systems, so it's, it's getting the dose delivery right. Um, that's one thing. And then, of course, we want to look at things like the transparent panel and how that would work with the misting and all sorts of things so uh, it's the delivery system to be i think that i don't know if glennis if you have any other i mean the testing well, as well I, I mean the testing is essential of course the major part of it i think the major problem jenny is money <laughs> money yeah yeah i mean people think this is a bit of a wacky idea you know it's um I, it's to me it's just seems quite logical but um <laughs> yeah it's getting this funded so yeah getting the getting the the next stage development funded so any ideas, let me know, please. <laughs> I guess it, well, having the Innovate UK funding must have been obviously, a, a, it must be a useful stepping stone. Oh, definitely, have, um, definitely. Yeah. yeah, and there is a lot of interest and I am speaking to mass manufacturers and, you know, innovators, entrepreneurs, all sorts of people. So, I mean, there is interest um, and I only just finished the project a couple of months ago. So right. I have made some headway and um, yeah, yeah. So I'm confident it will go somewhere. I don't know if any of the others of you have seen um, a thing. What's it called, Jenny? A material that goes on the surface of things and inhibits viruses. 
Covey coat or something. It's um, yes, yeah, Covey co coat. Co Covey coat. Yeah. yeah. So they're, they're a, a company in Cambridge that I've discovered recently that's some kind of coating. But there are a number of these antiviral coatings that I'm exploring as well. So, yeah. Okay, well, I, think, I think Jill had a question. Yeah. Yes, I did. I mean, you, you, you touched on money, and inevitably coming from the commercial field as I do, money, money was one of my que one, of, one of my questions. Um, I mean, given that, that certainly the, the UK government, I realise it's looking at it quite parochially because you're looking at this worldwide, no doubt. But mm. the UK government can barely afford pathetic, thin, rather oh. useless masks. How on earth are we to expect the NHS to? Uh, well, particularly when you see the deconstructed mask, it's clearly a very complex and expensive thing. How how is that affordable? And my other my other question was, um, and again, forgive me, everyone, because as, as Jenny knows, I'm 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 not a scientist at all. But um, is it a daft is it daft to ask? Is it is it dangerous to calm medics down too much? We have adrenaline for a very good reason. Um, it's also quite important and quite a lot of the quite a lot of the, the the problems have come with diagnostics on screen of late. I know a lot of people think it works very well, but for a lot of medical people I know, not being able to sort of smell and touch a patient is quite a problem. Is the mask actually going to provide a, a layer of removal from the patient and as I say calm people down so much they don't react quickly when they need to? Or is that rather extreme? Well, you. No, that's a very good point. But I, I think it's it's a it's a personalized personalized mask for, for people that you know perhaps use aromatherapy already or, or understand the benefits. So um, yeah, I mean it's not for everyone, absolutely. But it was uh, and, and anyway, we need to do clinical testing and all, all sorts of things. So it's you know, but, but no, very good point. And on your first point, sorry, remind me of the, the first point was the price point. Is that right? I mean, this is a this the, yeah. I mean, whether the, you know, I'm not sure the NHS will buy into this. Perhaps over in the Far East and. I've got connections and various talk going on over there, um, but certainly a sort of price point. And, and this is a reusable mask. So if you if you can, you know, if you could if, if you could sell this into the NHS as a kind of two year cycle, for example, and then you have all these capsules. So it's a reuse. So, you, yeah, it potentially you're, you're saving money that way. But I, I don't not not been able to grab the attention of the NHS so far. Well, it fits into the green agenda so beautifully. It does, yeah, absolutely. Given, given the overwhelming, uh, you know, our, our, obviously our absolute sort of obsession jointly with both green issues at the moment and with health issues, mm. you know, it might be, it might well be that actually the government could be persuaded to get people to, you know, to sponsor a mask, you know. Yeah, yeah, give, absolutely. Give five quid and, and, and a nurse has a mask. I'm, I'm sure they don't, don't cost five quid. I'm sure they cost a lot more than that. But... You, you get the principle, you know, mm. I'm sure a, a lot of people I know would be very happy to dig into their own pockets to sponsor a good mask for a nurse or a doctor. And that was the feedback we had from from the market research we did on this, actually, you know, speaking to some of the nurses and some of the medics. I mean, it's not for many people, but it was also, you know, many, many medics did, did actually like this, this idea of personalising their own mask with their own particular essential, you know, even for cognitive enhancement and uh, you know whatever it might be so um and then there were others others we spoke to how this could be it was in the film in fact you know in space and um the, yeah the various other applications so but we, yeah. and if i can i be greedy simon on, on the question front and ask a yeah, sure. quickly um you said at the beginning jenny that um it doesn't just react to but anticipates the wearer's mood how does that happen so, so yeah i mean that, that that's th this is to do with a project that i can't really talk about yet but it's a, it's a, a fellowship that i'm leading up it, yeah it's work in progress if you like so um that, that's um I, I mean i've been been taken on visiting research at university of cambridge looking into those sorts of issues so yeah <laughs> Well, absolutely fascinating. Yeah. And I should have said at the beginning, thank you very, very much for a brilliantly presented um, talk. I thought it was thank really, you. really interesting. Yep. Thank you. Any more questions? Uh, just have a comment if possible. So, uh, can I? Yeah, sure. Yeah. So, Jenny, thank you so much for your talk. I mean, very interesting. Um, we deserve much more time, I think, to go into details. So uh, I'm a reader in animal behavior and I study um, chemical communication in non-human primates um, and humans. Uh, so, so my comment is, is more generally speaking, not necessarily about the, the mask or the antiviral uh, function, is that you know, we, among many other things, um, I've been working 
uh, on designing and testing uh, scent enrichment to um, enhance uh, well-being in zoo primates, so decrease stress and anxiety in zoo primates, and also trigger uh, mating behavior. So, um, and we've had some, some promising results, uh, but I think it would be interesting, at least for us, to maybe collaborate in the future with you in terms of, you know, um, you know, delivery system okay. and, and so on. Uh, mm -hmm. I think that there will be some room for um, collaboration. Uh, we also lack enough to have a couple of fairly large grants at the moment. So we've got some, some, some money to spend, uh, which is always useful. Um, so yeah, if it's interesting for you, I know it, it's quite, a, you know, outside of your remit at the moment, but um, I can see some uh, interesting uh, potential collaboration. Hmm. Okay, well, certainly, yeah, I mean, drop, drop me an email or connect with me on LinkedIn. In fact, all of you are welcome to connect with me on LinkedIn if, if that helps. But yeah, thank you. Yeah, usually what works for humans does work for no human primates as well. Y yeah, and anyway, absolutely. There is potential, there's the delivery system, which is a, a bit of a point of weakness at the moment. Yeah. Collaborate together. Okay, okay, yeah, certainly. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? Can you hear me? Hi, yes. <laughs> Hi, Jenny. Congratulations on your invention to you and your team and good luck for the future work. Uh, I'm a psychiatrist and I do a research in dementia. I'm from King's oh. College, London. Okay. So I've been connected with, um, and with, with this um, group since I gave a talk on olfaction in Alzheimer's dementia. So mm. um, I came on because I was interested in the mask. It's an Asian plus uh, researcher yeah. Um, so my uh, uh, few few questions. One is, um, have you uh, how would it be used for an elderly person? Do they need help, especially those with dementia? Would they need help to put it on? And you did say it helps with cognition, so that would be very interesting. Well, for an, yeah. Uh, <laughs> that, <laughs> I mean, I mean uh, that that could be a future work. So if if it is, um, you know, if, if we know that COVID is going to stay. So if we can protect them from you know uh, from the virus and helps the behavior anxiety and fear is a big thing especially in nursing homes care homes uh, general community as well so whether it would help that as well and cognition so that i can see multiple uses there uh, from from your device um, so how uh, flexible how usable it is for elderly person and i as as um, I would I, I would be keen to collaborate as well as to whether we can do something in this area because we have some um, studies going on, clinical research and clinical trials going on. Whether this is something which we can add on, um, it's something we can consider. Yeah, no, definitely. I'd be very interested to, to discuss further. I mean, certainly dementia is a huge area that I'm interested in, it and, and that's something I'd be looking at just for you know even even using smells to to fuel appetite as well as, you know, reducing aggression and anxiety. So yeah, please reach out to me, certainly. Yeah. Um, I mean, certainly when we did the feedback on the market research mm -hmm. for this mask, there, there, there was interest in dementia care and care homes. So it's, it's yeah, I should have mentioned it. I didn't mention it in the talk, but that's, um, I was just trying to stay focused on, you know. Yeah, okay, okay. Thank, you. thank you. Yeah, no, feel, feel, feel free to reach I, out I, to me. I, 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 do you recall um, Jenny Ost uh, Jenny Lizzie Ostrom did some research in? I do. Yes, of course. Yes. Oh, Ode was it called Ode? Yeah, she did actually. Yes. No, that's a really good point. Yes, yeah, she did, and that was with the smell of bakewell tart and she, yes, she, she did right. appetite, and and I, I I can't remember the details, but it was something like a reduction. Um, I know it's not quite what you're talking about in terms of cogn cognition, but. They, you know, appetite was on. Um, yeah, that's a really good one. And the amount of food going back to the kitchen was reduced by about 30 percent, which obviously mm. meant that if people were nutritionally better off, then it actually improved their whole yeah. state. Yeah. So that was very interesting in itself. Mm. Yeah. But I mean, as far as sort of how how is the mask worn by the elderly, we need to we will certainly need to do user studies and, and all of that is to follow. But I'd be very happy to catch up with anyone about on that. Mm. Okay, is that it for the questions? Is there any more? Okay, uh, well, thank you very much, uh, Jenny, for a really interesting talk. Uh, the uh, 
And thank you everybody for joining uh, and uh, Krishna for ho hosting the meeting. Uh, the, uh, we're hoping to do an actual um, uh, uh, workshop uh, in uh, July, uh, 26th and the 27th of July, uh, 2022. Uh, but obviously uh, uh, we'll have to see how things go and uh, whether we actually manage it. We've, uh, we've signed the contract and uh, booked the place. Uh, but um, if, uh, if we don't manage to do it, we'll carry on doing uh, these, uh, these webinars uh, going forward. Uh, I'll just say uh, goodbye to everybody and thank you for joining. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Bye Thanks very much. Thank Bye. you. Thank you, Jenny. Bye. Thanks, Bye. Jenny. Pleasure. Thanks, Pleasure. Jenny. Bye. Thank you. Bye. Bye.